Admiral's Log, September 17, 1915. I've drafted plans for a new class of battlecruiser. While this might seem a step away from our recent focus on submarines and smaller surface ships, it's actually in line with our broader strategy of agile hit-and-run tactics. These battlecruisers are designed to be fast, hard-hitting, and able to operate independently, embodying our philosophy of striking swiftly and then disappearing. I'm eager to get these ships into service. With the growing number of threats facing the Soviet Union, we need a varied and robust fleet capable of handling different kinds of enemies and situations. These battlecruisers will give us a significant edge, allowing us to project power over greater distances and engage larger enemy forces on more equal terms. The design of these ships is innovative, focusing on speed, firepower, and stealth. They'll be able to strike hard against enemy ships and installations, then retreat before facing significant retaliation. This is about taking our naval tactics to the next level, combining the lessons we've learned from our submarine operations with the need for more substantial surface combat capabilities. There's some pushback, as always with new ideas, but I'm convinced this is the right move for our Navy. We're not abandoning our successful submarine strategy. We're augmenting it, adding another layer to our naval capabilities. With these battlecruisers, we'll be able to respond to a wider range of threats keep our adversaries guessing about our next move. As more nations look at the Soviet Union with hostility, we have to stay ahead in naval warfare. Our tech might be a little old, but these battlecruisers are still progress. They represent our commitment to innovation, adaptability, and strength. I'm pushing to get them into service as soon as possible. We need to be ready for whatever comes next. Hey guys, still here and welcome to 2024. If this is the first video, happy 2024. I hope that you'll have a very good year. I hope it's going to include some gaming, watching some stuff that you might like, uh, potentially including these videos. And I hope that it's going to be a, a, just a good year for you. Today on Dreadnoughts, in episode 19, we are going to take a couple of invasion ships to do non-invasion things. Because the, uh, well, whatever's left of the Spanish Navy has concentrated around my invasion target. Two battleships, Contento and Lanfranco. These are both Victorioso-class battleships. Well, the Spanish have been a lot of things, but Victorioso is definitely not one of them. These ships, armed with 13-inch guns, six of them, standard bulkheads, I see them as a potential failure point. Um, I also see that they have lost a bit of crew, so either they don't have a ton of crew available, um, it's entirely possible that the Spanish, because they've been so decimated, haven't been able to fix these ships, so they might be half dead. Now, the ships that I have are the proud Europa, with her refit, so she too carries 13-inch guns, but then we have Petrov and Riga, which are invasion ships, so they're very lightly armed. They don't do a whole lot of damage, but, you know, an 11-inch gun is still a potential threat to a cruiser, so let's see how well this is going to go for Time to start the fight. Although the enemy is immediately deploying a smokescreen to potentially either beat a retreat or just mask their approach. Whichever it is, we're gonna have to take these guys serious because they just pumped a couple of torpedoes into the water here. That's a nice destroyer rage you got there. And it looks like that torpedo is not detected just yet. I did research hydrophones a while ago, I just haven't refit my ships to include those in their gear. So detecting torpedoes is still something done by the traditional Mark I eyeball, i.e. Uh, do you see torpedoes? If not, the first warning you'll get is if your hull suddenly starts making sounds that they're not supposed to make and water starts flooding in. Now I have destroyers of my own. Um, but either this enemy destroyer is really far forward deployed, or the rest of the fleet is really far behind. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, that's almost like my destroyer. Like, 4-inch guns and a couple of 1.4s. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's too late now. Surprised that, considering she's surrounded, we're not getting better hits. There she goes. That was a 13-inch hit. That's more like it. And she survived? 
This thing has taken 13,000 damage. 17,000 damage. <laughs> and it's still here. How do you do that? Teach me your ways. Yeah. Much as expected, the Spanish battleships have taken some damage. Uh, there's nothing left in Spanish. This is whatever the remainder of the... Well, I guess once proud Spanish Armada has become. It's just a motley band of a couple of ships that apparently did manage to survive whatever the rule has thrown at them. And the world has thrown a lot at them. I don't think a Spanish campaign is going to be very easy. Uh, it has been requested and it has been suggested and I might get around to it at some point. But right now, I'm playing Russia. So we're going to finish this campaign first. Now, what other than these 13-inch guns are these guys sporting? Um, I'm seeing a couple of 6-inch guns, which from a destroyer's is not fun. I was hoping to torpedo these guys, but considering the threat they'll pose, I'm not sure if it's a good idea, because my torpedoes aren't quite there. Like, they're 5 kilometers out. Um, maybe? Oh, yeah, see, we're definitely uh, grabbing their attention by now. Okay, fine. We'll make a run. Because if I can eliminate some Spanish ships, great. I just don't know if there's any Spanish, uh, let's say, repayment money. Reparations. Because I can't take any more territory from them. Because they, I think, only have one, one territory left. Which is, I think, northern Spain. The one I couldn't invade. But outside of that, there's just no Spanish empire. There's no Spanish territories. Well, I mean... The islands we're going to. But I think that is about it. Now, this Contento has definitely... Yeah, right. Now the Contento detected the torps. But she was already turning to starboard. How do you explain that? If not for the omniscience of the AI. It's all-knowing, it's all-seeing, and it knows where your torpedoes are at all times. Because they know <laughs> it knows where they aren't. I mean, this is just... It's just bullshit, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, this looks pretty good. Boom, boom. Didn't hit the intended target, but I hit a target. And didn't you have standard bulkheads, my friend? Didn't you have standard bulkheads? Shame if something happens to that. Real shame. I think the Lanfranco might succumb to that, and if not, it's going to be an easy one to pick off. The Contento... Well, she's harmed, but she doesn't suffer any damage and stability yet, because that damage was done in a previous encounter. So it's not battle damage from present, and as such, doesn't count. Well, the Vostok took some flooding there. Finish off the Lanfranco. She's down to 26% buoyancy, she's struggling. Make her struggle some more. Now, as I said, the Petrov is officially a ship that I use for an invasion. It doesn't mean it cannot fight. It has those 11-inch guns, and it has a coincidence rangefinder. It is a ship that can deal damage. And as such, I will put her in harm's way. Because it is an 11-inch gun. It's uh, bigger than I have on my cruisers. So I might as well send her in. Focus on this and put every secondary gun on that. Because the Alcanada is probably looking to torpedo me, but doesn't have the range yet. Oh, she reconsidered. She reconsidered. We're also getting some collateral damage against targets that just happen to be in the area. Serious wrong place, wrong time situation. Wait, are those 8-inch guns doing a lot of damage? 1,600 damage with an 8-inch. Oh, yeah, against the torpedo boat. There. That was the Petrov that hit the Contento. Looks like the Contento, too, like her sister, is now regretting not being built better. I.e. having bulkheads. Lots of them. So, I'm, uh, I'm kind of ashamed doing this to the Spanish, but, you know, it had to get done if I want to grab this territory. And especially this territory that I'm now going for can be very nice to launch submarines from. It can be also very, very useful if you have, for example, a war with the French or the Italians, and you just mine the place. Just completely area denial in the Mediterranean. It might be very, very, very useful for that. Now, let's end the battle. I don't want to chase down, like, two cruisers and 
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh my god. Complete slaughter. Complete slaughter. Something I didn't see, but apparently did happen, is that the Europa took a hit. Uh, light damage. I don't think it was that bad. The Vladivostok took a much more serious hit. But, well, she's gonna have to just uh, pony up the damage and survive. The... No, Canada, it's not happening. Um, the situation with Japan has me really concerned now, because we're now at minus 74. I think it is time to start activating my ships again on that side, and be ready to face the Japanese yet again. The Japanese are probably already suffering from the war against the British, but I really haven't been keeping track. The only thing I have been noticeably not seeing is British ships in the Sea of Japan or here in the East Asia Theater. There's just no British activity. Which is somewhat surprising because the British generally have quite, quite a lot of interest. Did they change their flag? Those are Chinese boats. Okay. Um... Yeah, you know, the Brits are also fighting the French. So it's entirely possible that the Brits have their hand full. Hold on, where are all the British ships and where are all the French ships? You're going towards the Mediterranean. Here is a British ship, one destroyer. Where's everybody else? Didn't the British have 15 battleships at some point? 12. Where are they? And why is Africa so interesting? What? I still have a ship here. No, they have a ship here. It's a Spanish warship off the uh, Santa Cruz. Okay. Well, I guess the Brits are busy chasing the Germans here or something? Not even that, no. Okay. Um, I find it very hard to believe that the British would be cowering in their ports. Not if you have 12 battleships, then you just go out there and take the fight to the enemy. And I don't believe the AI just cowers in their ports anyway. Maybe it used to do that once upon a time, but it's not done that for a very long time. So the British AI must be going off the rails again, looking for trouble where there just isn't any. Uh, oh, not too bad. As for my war with the austro hungarians sorry, with the Italians, um, not too much has changed. I'm keeping it active, like I said, because I want to keep the budget active. Beyond that, not a whole lot of movement on the... After some of the invasion ships landed some brave Soviet marines on the Balearic Islands, I now control them. And this is one of those areas that I mentioned is going to be pretty important. Because this one is going to be very much in the way of everybody. Majorca is not a big port, but considering that a submarine is really, really small, like, these things have almost no tonnage, you can park a lot of submarines there, uh, which means you can deploy mines, you can launch attacks on merchant shipping in the Western Med, you can harass battleships, you can do a lot with submarines. I don't currently have a need for them, however. I don't believe my reputation with the French is so bad that I need to worry about a war with them, um, the British I'm not concerned about because they're my ally. The Germans generally don't operate here. Um, the Americans I have an okay understanding with, I believe, yeah, 54. Italy has been pestered enough. The Japanese, however, that bar continues to go down. Now, I have been taking steps in order to prepare for the war i.e. I am working on building, where are they, the new battlecruisers. Um, it's going to take me a few more months, like six months, half a year. If I can delay the war a bit more, that'd be great. I'm not sure if I can, however. That is kind of a problem. I am not sure if I can. I'm also not quite sure where to send my fleet. Uh, Mallorca is not big enough. Sevastopol is. I also have this port over here, Santa Cruz, but it's really quite small. So, yeah, I guess we're going back to Sevastopol with the ships that I still have left. Where's Europa? Did Europa just get beamed back to a port? She did take some damage, but I don't believe she sank. She's in Gibraltar? Huh. Okay, so that's a feature. 
I'm apparently docked with <laughs> with my ship in the port of Gibraltar. And in the port of Gibraltar, I'm getting some fixes from the Brits. Yeah. There's the... Wow. Okay. So there's the Durbans and the Europa. I don't know. You can actually look into other people's ports and... Oh, you can't. Only if they're allied, perhaps. Anyway, um, I think I've done enough to Spanish. I don't believe they have much more to give. So at this point, I am going to take, and this is going to sound really harsh, the last of their thing, which is their money. If they have any left. Because the Spanish economy, it's not quite what it once was. <clears throat> the Spanish Golden Age has very much ended, leaving them in a GDP of only 11 billion, which is uh, six times smaller almost seven times smaller than my own. And I am definitely lagging behind the rest of the world too. So let's see if they still have something left in the coffers and then prepare for a war over in Asia. Just as I'm turning my attention east, I should have been turning it northwest. The Germans, they're back. I can either cough up 113 million, thank you very much, or say that our patience is over um I'm, hold on yes i'll agree to a war or uh, to a peace with the italians and go to war with the germans as long as i can keep a war going i can oh um i can just keep something happening with my money which is suffering enough as is um i have received no peace deal with spanish no you're not getting it I guess we're going to have to retask the fleet here to go... Well, no, these are invasion ships. Yeah, I have the place here pretty much locked down with submarines. I wonder how much we can actually do with the subs against their subs. Interesting. I do have a whole bunch of new submarines, which are... Oh, they're coming out basically now. I forgot to give them to a, a specific port, but there are a few in the Baltics. They're commissioning. Once that's done, basically a month from now, I can send these guys out and give the Germans the good news about how not to attack my ports. It looks like the German Navy, much like their other part, their, their counterparts, like the Brits and the French, don't have their Navy here. They're all partying somewhere else. Where exactly? I don't know. They're just not home. But what is home is their army, and it's pretty formidable. That's 1.2 billion... Sorry, well, <laughs> that'd be a lot. Uh, 1.2 million men in Prussia. There's not a whole lot that I can do to boost my army logistics. I mean, I'm building my transport fleet. Beyond that, I don't have a whole lot to do. Um, the transport capacity, navy power, I'm working on navy power, I'm doing research, I'm trying to get my navy's power rating up, but it's proving pretty difficult. I don't really know what else to do beyond try to attack the Germans and deal as much damage as I can. Now that we're at war with the Germans, that does give me an interesting opportunity. I'm going to take my whole fleet from Korsakov and send it to Qingtao. This is the Kaocho Bay territory. It is currently only defended by 14,000 men, population 60,000, so it cannot be that much. If I can conquer this, that would give me a nice boost to my income. Outside of that, the Germans do have the Caroline Islands, which is about half a million. Sorry, 500 million. Uh, the Bismarck Archipelago for 790 million. And I believe that pretty... Oh, sorry, and the Indonesian... Seas? What is this part of? Yeah, it's part of the Indonesian seas, I guess. Uh, Timor, but it's 234 million. It's not that interesting. So, yeah, the Germans might be losing some territory here. I, however, might be losing some territory here. This is exactly what I was worried about. Prussia moving into Lithuania. There is a massive, massive German army. Three and a half million men on the move. Normally, you'd say, well, defender's advantage, you should be fine. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's really going to be true. We'll just have to hope that that's going to be true. But I honestly, with the state that the Soviet army is in, don't think that I'll be able to stop that. 
Just when I didn't need more on my plate, Austria-Hungary puts it right there. War erupted between the Soviets and Austria-Hungary. Here we go again. There's not a whole lot that I can really do at the moment to try and, uh, well, inflict any serious damage against them, I'm afraid. Because there isn't a whole lot of shipping as far as I see. They got four battleships. Well, actually, no, they have been building. Huh. It's interesting how the AI just goes and they have battleships. It's annoying. It's really annoying. My navy doesn't work like that. If only. Um, what can I do against these gentlemen? I can send my submarines back out. That's what. We're going to put the subs back out to sea. If this is how these gentlemen want to play it, they're going to get submarined all over the place. And I am also fairly swiftly going to have access to my new battle cruisers, which will give me even more punching power. The battle cruisers are somewhat delayed because I'm trying to fit my shipyard capacity and build ships for other nations. They want uh, battleships, battle cruisers, and quite the arms dealer. So I'm going to try and just spread out these ships. Uh, I think Kuban is going to have to go... Oh, Kuban's going to Riga. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's where the new conflict's going to take place. That leaves me with... Vladimir is going to Tallinn. We're going to put Perm over here. Um, being in Odessa. So that's going to give me a bit more firepower in Odessa. And seeing as the Austro-Hungarians no longer have a port over here, I should be fine to push these ships back out to sea. However, the Europa was under repair in Gibraltar uh, and then got beamed over to here, I think, because I lost the alignment with the British. The alliance failed or collapsed, or however you want to put it. So now the Europa is over here. And this means, all of a sudden, my, let's say, one of my key battleships is no longer available in the region. I do, however, have a bunch of submarines, and I have the invasion fleet. Actually, no, the Apostle Piotr is over here. Never mind, I got three battleships. We can, uh, we can take a swing at these guys. Is it possible to take territory, though? Like, this... Might seem like it doesn't have a whole lot of defenses, but I wouldn't be very surprised if they're going to just mine the shit out of this place. And then suddenly surprise me with a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, the Apostle Piltor first have to get recommissioned. Hmm. Where's the Piltor at? Here. Get back in. The other one is uh, the uh, Yakov in the Korsakov port, but I'm currently not really using that. Also, my invasion fleet over here has arrived. I'm just not sure why I cannot launch an invasion against the Germans, because the naval invasion button isn't there. So that's a bit weird. Maybe... Oh. I don't have enough tonnage. That's what's happening. I need to get the Yakov commissioned as well before I'll be able to even get close to the amount of tonnage that I need. Ugh, fine. Um, I can, they won't like it, but I can say I am going to cancel the sale of Khabarovsk to Mexico, giving me another 22,000 tons worth of battlecruiser, but Mexico is going to be really unhappy about that. And I kind of don't want to break the deal there. Because that might mean that they won't be offering any more ships, and I need their clientele. I need their business. More importantly, I need their cash. So, I guess we're just going to have to wait for the recommissioning. Um, and hope that Austria-Hungary doesn't decide to do another naval, or sorry, a land invasion. Because that's something at the moment that I cannot stop. Player 4 has entered the game. The Empire of Japan. Yay. Uh, let's see if we can at least take the Spanish out of the equation. Oh, the British are also engaging Austria-Hungary. That's nice. I am going to be losing transports again, which decreases my already dwindling transport capacity and my armor logistics even more. 
The Brits are losing a ton of transports. The French are losing transports. Jesus. Um, come on, Canada. You can make a better bid than that. I will not accept that. Uh, also, this. At the moment, the Austro-Hungarians don't bring enough men. I do. Hopefully, I can hold this. But it's, uh, it's a lot of hopeful. Over here, submarine encounter. Nothing too special. Over here is another submarine encounter. It's like two toddlers fighting. And sometimes they damage each other. Sometimes they don't. It's not something I can really influence. Um, I am trying to just block off power projection. Or block off uh, merchant shipping here. And hopefully, I'll be successful. Um, but now that... The Navy over here is going to be a little busy fighting, you know, everything from Japan. I might be a little too busy to try and also do a naval landing here. This is going to be fun. It's going to be uh, very, very, very expensive. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to send out more submarines, send out more ships, and especially uh, try and disable as much merchant shipping from Japan as possible. Because I don't really see another good way to deal with the Japanese. They are just so strong with their fleet. And they tend to also progress pretty quick through their technology. Uh, they got average tech. I am still classed as very far behind, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. Now, my GDP is, or my growth has been really bad. But this is because I have not been at peace in a very long time. Uh, nor with all these enemies do I expect to go to peace anytime soon. You remember those new light cruisers I designed in a previous episode? We're about to test them. This is the Abrek. We have the Kogul, which is an older Scout class cruiser. And we have the Kafkaz, which is also a Scout cruiser. They're defending six transports against the heavy cruiser Friedrich Karl. Armed with 9 6.2 inch guns as well as 10 5.2s. That's a lot of firepower for a heavy cruiser, but it's not that big. My guns are bigger. My speed is fairly similar at 27 to 28. And hopefully this DD is going to die very quickly. Uh, we need to defend this transport. Because my transport capability is key. It's almost costing me the campaign. Simply not being able to grow the economy. And as such, I need to do something in order to keep my transports alive. If that means sacrificing three light cruisers in order to do it, it might almost be worth it, as weird as that sounds, because light cruisers are replaceable. Uh, transports are also replaceable, but arguably potentially more expensive in the long run. Now, over here, we can find the Kafkaz, which is the older scout cruiser. And here is the Abrek. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh, here goes. She's sporting those 7-inch guns, which have a fairly healthy amount of punch. This should give the heavy cruisers some pause. They can fire out to about 11 kilometers with AP. Whether they'll actually hit anything remains to be seen. Now, considering that these two ships are really quite dissimilar, I'm going to keep the Abrek in a separate div. I'm going to have her take a slightly different course. So that ideally she'll be able to bring both of those 7 inches to bear. And potentially put a couple of holes in the CL. Uh, sorry, in the, sorry, uh, the CA, the heavy cruiser. So that when I'm done uh, making her slower, I can potentially pump her full of torpedoes with Kafkaz. That is the objective here. I hope, however, that both the light cruiser classes are going to live long enough. Because these things are made out of paper. And paper generally doesn't do too well against a 2-inch gun, let alone a 5 or a 6. So life is going to get very interesting for all of these ships. There is the first bit of damage. Sadly, it's on me. Alright, Kafkaz, full ahead flank. I think firing HE is definitely my best chance here. Ow. Things really hurt. Read them in the water. Kafkaz, if you could respond in kind, that would be much appreciated. Normal. Uh, push in. You push out. It's going to hit. However, she did drop her torps. Oh, this is going to be like a mutual exchange of death. Ow. 
Well, that Friedrich Karl's going down, that's for sure. But I'm not too sure about Kafka's. Second set of Torps away from Kagul. And that ought to sink them. Because they got flooding everywhere. Every single compartment is taking on water. And that is one expensive H... Ooh, heavy cruiser going down. Destroyed a main gun, but thankfully no flash fire on Kagul. Kafkaz is flooding, but hopefully can get that fixed. We're going to get the Abrak over here. This actually went a lot better than I'd expected. Because these new light cruisers are one giant experiment, and I don't really know what to expect from them. Oh, you got low fuel? Didn't you just come out of port? How do you have low fuel? Bloody hell, I got no shells left. Damn it. <laughs> when my ammunition exploded, or a main gun got destroyed... Yeah. Kagul lost a main gun, and as such, does not have any kind of gun, or any kind of shells left. She's firing armor-piercing against a DD. So yeah, everything's going according to plan. Uh, I'm going to be running dry with this CL very quickly. I think it's going to be down to the Abrak to catch this thing. Run at flank speed, please. Because that DD might be low fuel. Means we might be able to catch it. She's running at... Ah, she's running at 20 knots. She'll be... She'll be interceptable, if that's a word. 8.5 million versus my 28 million. 65 shells... Ah, there it is. Flooding. Slow down, dude. I need to start wrapping up some of these wars. Whether it's Germany, whether it's the Japanese, I don't really care which one decides to crumble first. But I need something to end. I need one of these wars to stop. Because I'm spread so thin that every engagement is costing me, well, a lot of damage. And thus money to repair it. Uh, and potentially is going to cost me transports because my ships are busy and if they're not busy they're busy getting repaired so one way or another way um, the ships generally tend to be unavailable to defend the transports thankfully these guys were here but um, it's more of a, a lucky lucky happening <laughs> lucky accident <laughs> should I say happy little accident um, then a strategy I can actually rely on that DD is still very maneuverable. And just about ready to pump me full of torps. Come on, Kagul, you got port sight. Extremely short range. Boom, boom, boom. Four torpedoes struck you and you didn't die? Oh, two of them were duds. Yeah, and you got the, the DD magic super protection. Because of course you do. Alright, Abrek. Time to get in here and get some experience for your crew. It's the 7-inch Mark II and the 5-inch Mark II. We are working, I think, on the 5-inch Mark III, but I'm not sure if that's going to be available anytime soon. Look at this DD! Two torpedoes? Eh. It's fine. At worse. <laughs> it is a flesh wound. Now, how much armor do you carry? About half an inch. Okay. So in this case, I think my 7-inch AP is a bit much. 7-inch HE should be enough to clip this thing enough to cause more flooding. Don't do that. Yeah, that was definitely meant for the Abrak. Uh, you're going to have to be very careful where you place those next couple of shots. Have you even hit anything with the 7-incher? And you have hit nothing with the 7-incher. Phenomenal. Okay. Nevertheless, we will kill the DD. So hopefully the Baltic Sea is a little bit safer. As we are eagerly awaiting the return of some of my ships that are currently undergoing repairs. I am also going to try and pump this area full of submarines. Just to try and contend the area, or contest the area as much as I can. Because it's going to have to be that to try and deal with their transports. Ow. Or find some other way to put some power projection in the water here. But I'm not even sure I still have a battleship in the area. 
What the hell is this ship doing? The 7-incher should be able to start targeting this thing now. Pitch and roll aren't nearly that bad. You still haven't hit jack shit with 7-inchers. Make an effort. It's the 4-inchers from the scout cruiser that are doing all the work, isn't it? Yeah, Kafkaz is doing all the work. Not only did she sink the heavy cruiser single-handedly, but she's now also doing the same thing to the DD. Well, good thing we still have the scout cruisers. Old as they might be, refit did make them viable, and the transports are all safe. Naturally, this is not the only transport that is at risk. There's another five over here, and the Conrad Cat, the OG Conrad Cat, is around to try and defeat the Kasagi and the Tama, which would give me some nice victory points against the Japanese. Um, I don't need tons of victory points. I just want to have a little bit of peace. And I know that's going to cost me some naval budget. So I'll have to put a whole bunch of ships and potentially the whole Russian Navy in mothballs. But I do need to do something. Oh, God. I do need to do something to try and get my economy back on track. And the way that it's currently going... I'm growing by 0.1% per year or something stupid like that because I'm at war all the time. I need to give my economy a break, give them some opportunity to come back from all this fighting and all this shipbuilding and see if I can actually get some economic, uh, economic growth going. Now this fight over here is going to prove to be pretty interesting because I'll only be able to see the target at the last possible second. No, it's not that bad. I thought the fog was going to be a lot denser than that, but apparently, even though I can't see the ship, my ship can. If your weather visually looks like this, then arguably my ship should not be able to see their ship. Because, you know, we don't have radar or anything to that extent. Look at these guns. That is some accuracy. It's a lot more accuracy than those 7-inchers had. Oh, they're the Mark III. That explains a lot. Let's keep the cat zigzagging. It might be a cat by name, but I'm not sure if she has nine lives when it comes to dealing with enemy torpedoes. That Kasagi is going down quick. There it is! Hello. Did you not? Are these things expensive? 42 million? Damn. What did you put on there? They put a lot of speed on there. 33 knots. With 7,000 tons of displacement. That's almost twice what I have on my CL. That's a big light cruiser. What kind of other gear do you get? Turbines. Cat ballistic HE shells. Okay, boom. Uh, electrical turrets. 19 inch fast torpedo. Stereoscopic rangefinder. Hydro. And advanced radio. Yeah, that's going to cost you a pretty penny. But hey, um, the original Conrad Cat doesn't care about all your gear. <laughs> and the 9 inchers hits just as hard. Now, of course, this is not quite the OG Conrad Cat in the sense that, yeah, she got a couple of refits. So it's not the 1900 cruiser. But 15 years after her inaugural sea trials, she's still out there and she's still kicking ass. Successfully, I might say. That's one CL down. This thing is... <laughs> this thing is cheaper. <laughs> and both of those CLs combined. Now that's rich. That is really good. Alright, Kasagi. Curtains for you, dude. Did you forget bulkheads? No, you didn't. You even got many... Many bulkheads and spacious crew quarters. Interesting. Shit, you just torped me, didn't you? Yeah, you did. Cease and desist. There's the damage. More pen. I mean, HE. Ah, there's the flooding. That's what I was waiting for. Flooding hits. And now you're dead. Excellent. More transports saved. If only I could actually go on the offensive against their transports. Sadly, I don't know if it actually makes a difference. Because... Well, I've sunk transports of theirs before, but their economies still seem to grow. 
Whereas if you, as a player, lose a couple of transports, your economy goes, nope, I can't afford to lose those guys. So yeah, there goes your economy. So that's a couple of victory points against the Japanese. Uh, the first of many, as far as I'm concerned. When it comes to Germany, I am ahead, but not by that much. Naval funding is looking very decent, especially as I ended the war against Spain. That got me some decent money. Now, I'm hoping that my submarines are able to do some damage against the submarine, sorry, against the surface element that the, J the Japanese have here. There's two battleships. Um, they appear to be going to this port here. I'm not sure exactly why, but okay. We got the Sviatoyakov over here. Should be ready, because I don't believe that she's undergoing repairs at the moment. So if I can add her to the heavy cruisers that I have over here, that might be able to do something. As for my submarines, I got most, well, pretty much every one of them deployed. And I don't have any new ones getting built, so let's fix that. Let's get another, uh, oh, I don't know, these things are cheap as chips. 15 built. And let's set them, at least a good bunch of them. You guys are going to go to Vladivostok. You guys are going to go to the Baltics. So let's say Riga. This means we're going to have a bunch of submarines operating out, operating out of here, Vladivostok, in the Sea of Japan. The rest of them are going to be operating out of Riga, Latvia, and dealing damage against the Germans. Or at least that is the plan. If I'm able to intercept, for example, this battleship, that would be fantastic. Any kind of damage is good. I do not have a ship here in Klaipeda. I do have the Europa over here. She is ready, and she might be able to take the fight to the Germans. So let's send her and new battlecruiser Kuban over there in order to deal some damage. Oh, she's being commissioned. Kuban is being commissioned. Okay. How long? Is that going to take me one month or two? 100%. Okay. Uh, next month, we're going to have Vladimir, and the month after, we're going to have Perm. So we're going to have a couple of battlecruisers out there. One in Riga, one in Tallinn, one in Odessa. So every port gets a battlecruiser. And hopefully with these eight 13-inch guns, they're going to shift the balance of power. How that works out, we'll have to see in a future episode. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon for the next.